You are now listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Yeah, yeah we are back. We're we, we about to take it back, back, back. It's been a while. It has been a while. We were just saying, when's the last time we all recorded together? Two weeks ago? Yeah, that and it starts to feel like a long time, you know, when you when you do weekly, when you sometimes back back to back, sometimes back to back. Have we ever done three in a day? No, I don't think I could. What about uh, it, last year Whistler Crankworks? Ooh, Ooh, maybe we maybe no, no, I don't know. Maybe we definitely did like four in two days. I feel like we're talking about podcasts, by the way. What else are we talking about? <laughs> I don't know. It could be anything. Pooping? Four in a day, or like I don't know. What's the <laughs> What's the most times you've pooped in a day? <laughs> Lots. Uh, recently in Spain. Uh, oh, yeah. Probably 20. <laughs> I guess that doesn't count. I feel like we need to put parameters on it. <laughs> you can't have had food poisoning. Yeah, that's like that's like juicing. That's like steroid. <laughs> it's like steroids for shitting. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But just like uh, a, a relatively normal day. The most? Yeah. Still? Probably four. Uh, yeah, I feel like four is the right number. Yeah, that's not the right number. You should only go once. No, it's number two. That's the right number. <laughs> wow. You should only go once? No, a I feel day? like two is healthy. Two is healthy? Like morning and night? Yeah. Oh. Wow. Should we... One minimum, <laughs> two, two is good. <laughs> is that how much you go? I'm about... Like, I'd probably average like one and a half. Or two, I don't know. One Hold on. What's that half? Is that half like just in your pants? No, the day? no, no, no. Like if you aggregate a full week, I'm I'm, I'm pooping like ten times or whatever, mm. right? And then yeah. if you divide that by seven, it's like one and a half. Another one. Mm, that Anyways. still seems like a lot. Alonzo. How many How many listeners have we lost already? <laughs> um, I, I I'd say I'm like good, like one one a day if mm-hmm. I'm healthy. Um, if on my regular basis, probably once a month. What what? Once Sorry, what? what? No, I'm joking. <laughs> I, I, the joke is that I poop once a month. There's um, a certain type of, I can't remember what kind of animal it was. Maybe like a little like <sighs> marmot or some sort of mouse or something. And they their poop comes out in perfect squares. Dope. And I listened to a podcast cubes, once. Yeah, like cubes. Yeah. And I listened to a podcast once and they were trying to figure out why, like they don't know why. And they were like, is it like the shape of the butthole? Is it their internal organs are doing it? And they like didn't have a definitive answer. There was just a bunch of theories. Yeah. I mean, how could you ever? And they're like, why? But like, why also? Like perfect <laughs> cubes. It's beautiful. Nature works in mysterious ways. <laughs> All right, should I intro, intro the pod? Well, wait, should we address the elephant in the room? What? Well, I was going to do that in the intro. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, do the intro then. Welcome to Feeding Off Each Other, a weekly podcast where we feed off the talent, humor, knowledge, and awesome stories of our guests and each other. I'm Jason Lucas, and today I'm joined by David the Salmon Wiggins. Yes, that is me. Okay, flop, flop. <laughs> I don't know. What am, I supposed to, what am I supposed to be like? Wiggle, wiggle. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. You just, you got to riff off what I say. So yeah, wiggle, wiggle. Yeah. Um, and also I'm joined by uh, the always attentive Big Al. You know me, Jason. Oh, I just messed up the camera. You know me, Jason. I'm always on it. <laughs> and joining us as well today, um, well, actually not joining us is Matt, uh, the dummy... Dennison, cut to Matt. Uh, yeah, he's cut. <laughs> hey, listen. Yeah, uh, Matt's looking a little rigor mortis today. Um, looking a little pale. A little pale. But little, honestly, better than he's ever looked. <laughs> little green around the gills. Um, yeah, Matt's not here. He sent a proxy in his stead. Yeah, with a bunch of money mm-hmm. in his hand. Um, and rocking some very nice new pit vipers. Mm-hmm. And he's got a uh, a 1980s cell phone. Dave, where's Matt? And what does this mean for his perfect record? Where's Matt? Matt's uh, Matt's not feeling so well, so uh, we told him to sit this baby out. No! <laughs> and uh, I think he's pretty upset about it. Like he, I believe he referenced his perfect attendance last episode. <laughs> 
at least within the last few episodes. And so I think he was feeling a little bit smug and, uh, you know, karma, she's a, she's a nasty little <laughs> bitch and she came up and sp- spanked his cute little tish. <laughs> Welcome to the Miss the Podcast Club. Yeah, we've all missed, we've all missed them now. I don't know what we're going to do without him other than just the podcast. It, what do you mean without him? Like, how could this go on? I know we're, we're missing the, the anchor that we usually have the person that's keeps things on the rails. He, uh, he sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll say like, ah, I don't think I really yeah, delivered on that podcast. And I'm like, no man, you were the one keeping it all together. You sure about that? He's, he's the, he's the professional spirit on the pod. Yeah, I know. And, um, I'm pretty, hold on. I'm trying to find a sound. Good lord. We're just a couple bumbling idiots. Yeah, like, it's right. There we go. I don't know what any of this shit is, and I'm fucking scared. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how I always feel when we record a podcast. I know. Yeah, and he's he's always got those slick transitions and stuff. Yeah. He also said this might be one of the first podcasts he listens to, so, <laughs> Matt, I hope you're enjoying. <laughs> hope you like the show. He's already tuned out. He's like, they talked about poo for three or four minutes up Oh, front. you don't think he likes talking about poo? I don't think he likes talking talking about poo on air yeah. who gives a shit i actually don't think he likes talking about poo mm. he, he's, he's he's he doesn't like the ickies <laughs> i can smell you <laughs> <laughs> okay well what are we doing today then we don't have a guest either we kind of um don't have uh much of anyone we got each other. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I was about to say, I'm here. Each oh. other. Oh, and you don't really exist. You kind of like. I'm not a real person. I don't matter. You're like Schrodinger's <laughs> cat, where it's like when the box is closed, you might be alive or dead, and then you we, you need to chime in, and then you do exist. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly that. And I'm when still I leave a the piece door, of garden. I mean, I just like disintegrate like Voldemort yeah. at the end of the franchise. <laughs> There are people that like in my life where I, I'm like, when you're not, when I don't think about you, you're not around, you don't exist as a person. Oh, like who? I don't know. Just like people I can't imagine existing in any other. I'm like, what do you do? Like, who are you? Me, uh, Matt, yeah. your sister. <laughs> do you got a, do you got a fun fact? I do have a fun fact. Did you look at it? I, I didn't read it all. I saw the intro. Oh God. Well, it's very short. So. <laughs> Um, this is our first June podcast, so I brought up a... Wait, is it June? It will be June. Oh, this okay. Comes out. Okay. It's, it's almost June. The first June podcast was the one I uploaded last night, June 1st. Baby, check it out on the YouTube. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Shouting out old episodes? <laughs> well, anyway, it's June now, so I have a June fun fact. June uh-huh. is Accordion Awareness Month, <laughs> as well as Candy... Dairy and papaya month. <gasps> Separate. <Okay>. Like <laughs> so it's, June's a big month. Whoa, 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 wait. Is why is it accordion awareness? Like <laughs> we don't give accordions enough love, okay. That sounds like it's a disease. Would it well like, I mean it isn't it? Isn't accordion it? Accordion to who? <laughs> yeah. Zing. Hold on. Yep. Bazinga. There we go. Um, okay, well, I wonder if Weird Al pushed for that. Accordion? <laughs> yeah. I'm a big accordion fan, if I'm being more honest. But no, I, I'm, I didn't know about the papaya thing. I love papaya smoothies. Really good for gut health. <laughs> and not so good for gut health is a dairy month for you, Dave. <laughs> you know what, though? Now that I'm on a very strict lactate uh, regimen, I, like, never feel bad from dairy. I, f- I wonder if this is a... Uh, uh, like a marketing campaign from lactate, like big lactate industries. Big Tade. Big Tade. Just be like, yeah, it's it's dairy month, so you might as well stock up on some lactates. Yeah. Well, my in- insides feel like an accordion if I have too much dairy, if you know what I mean. And you're aware of it. And I'm aware of it. And for me, it's candy month. Alonzo, you said you really like accordion? Yeah, one of, uh, uh, like, an old family friend, he was a big accordion player. He would always bring it to the house. Oh, that's hot. That's, That's hot. hot. Yeah, I think one of my friends' grandpa played accordion, and I don't remember enjoying it. <laughs> I remember thinking it was like novel, like I, I, that's a thing, but being like, mm, not so much. It's like the bagpipes. Yeah, it's very bagpipe. When someone else is like, I'm gonna bring out the bagpipes and play, and you're like, N- no, no, I don't want that. <laughs> yeah, the Remembrance Day assembly. It just, I don't, it's <laughs> yeah. quiet and. <laughs> yeah, it just feels like a soldier has died, and it's Remembrance Day. That's the only. 
Association. Yeah, like Speaking of pipes, should we hit the speak pipe? My God, your transitions are just <laughs> I out thought of Matt was gone. I thought Matt was gone. He's right here. Yeah, we can go into some pipes. Do we have any? Sorry, Jason. I feel like I cut you off. Were you about to did. chime in with another speak? I can't even remember what I was going to say. I just, I had that, I had that transition in my hot little hand and I, I didn't want to, I guess I, I didn't want us to shit on bagpipes too hard. Like I appreciate that it's a tough instrument to play, oh, yeah. but man, sometimes it just is not the time or the place. Well, there's, okay. There's this thing with instruments and music though, where it's like people respect playing of instruments and music for its complexity sometimes. And it's, and it's challenge level, but like that doesn't necessarily equate to listenability. Like, yeah. like people like, like I play the drums, uh, not that well. Oh, okay. We let me explain. Nobody cares. And then like, I've been, I remember I like went to like a drum workshop thing with my dad one time. Cause my dad's a drummer and this guy was like, and he was like so good. And it's like doing all this shit. And I was like, this isn't like good to listen to though. Mm-hmm. It's more just like, I oh, get it. You're, it's like athletic. I call it like athletic music playing. Mm, yeah i can see that like certain like really like progressive rock and jazz stuff it's like okay we get it. or like or like really hardcore metal where the drummer's like playing quadruple bass and you're like oh, it's, it's fine <laughs> you're just really good at it I understand. yeah like <laughs> cool it's like you broke a record all right well you now that we've lost all the bagpipers yeah. mm-hmm. all the bagpipers accordioners uh drummers mm-hmm. i've unsubscribed should we listen to some pipe Okay, the first pipe we got in the pipeline is from Alex. Huge fan, Alex. Hey, guys, what's up? It's uh, you biggest fan from the East Coast in Ontario. Uh, Just listening to your latest episode where you guys were talking about different video games from when you were a kid. Um, Obviously, Ski Free is up there, Mm -hmm. one of the best. But also, there's a game we played growing up called Chips Challenge. It's pretty sweet. You can run around. You can collect different keys and different feet, so you can walk on different uh, game tiles and stuff. And you have to collect all the chips. Um, yeah. See ya. <laughs> Wait, was he just making us aware of this? Yeah, it's Chips Challenge Awareness Month. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think I've ever played. This. It looks like um. Kind of like a Zelda knockoff. Pull up, pull up, uh, like a little gameplay footy. Yeah, chips challenge. See, I I didn't read it or I didn't hear it in my head as like like chip. It's like chip, chip apostrophe s. Mm. Um, the fuck, that looks like Minesweeper. Yeah, it looks like. Shouts out Tony Kruger. Who's Tony Kruger? He's the creator of Chips Challenge. All right. Brother Freddy? Yeah, this looks terrible. <laughs> well, I mean, for the time. Even so. for the time, it looks pretty bad. Oh, you're just... Alex, I think it looks great. It's so janky. What do you mean? <laughs> All of the video games back then Not this janky. janky. Look at it. It's like frame by frame. Like it's like the, one frame per second. The moving. The, the sprite is in the same like spot. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's true. It's <laughs> This is extraordinary. Uh, yeah, I thought at first it was just like a like you're a character that's trying to eat a lot of chips. I thought that too, but I guess the guy's named Chip. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's move along. Yeah. Thanks for calling in, Alex. Thanks for calling in. Uh, um, maybe next time formulate a question for us. Oh come on, this is so hard <laughs> on him. All right. This we appreciate it, but that was a bit of a dead end conversation wise. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, thanks, Alex. So this next one is from Ryan, the Loam Shark. Oh. Oh, I wonder what he's into. What's up, guys? Ryan here again. First off, shouts out Christina. You guys know what to do. Uh, Last time I called, you guys accused me of uh, taking a dump while I was on the phone with you. No, I just crashed my mountain bike a few days before and had a few bruised ribs and didn't feel that that was an important story to tell, I guess, through my pain. Uh... So, anyways, just wanted to clear that up. Uh, I crashed partially due to not reducing my front tire pressure on the trail. So, I know you guys want some discussion pieces. So, what's your stupid mistake that led to a 
stupid injury and mm. all that. Mm. Um, anyways, I just, uh, sorry if I'm hard to hear. I'm currently in a Peterbilt and just took 1,500 gallons of uh, old poop out of the ground because I do septic. So that's been my day. Looking forward to hearing about yours. Anyways, talk to you guys later. Ryan got the assignment of the episode, apparently. Yeah. Like, it's just been wall-to-wall poop talk. Yeah, wow. Because first he starts with saying that we accused him of being on the toilet last time he called in. And then he's like, uh, that's crazy, but I am sucking poo out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'm not putting it into the ground. I'm taking it out. <laughs> I liked it. Oh, man. I was also like, "What's a, I hope he tells us what a Peterbilt is because I didn't know what that was so that's I think like the truck truck that takes out it's that, a septic have you truck? seen septic videos on like tiktok or youtube it's yeah. pretty satisfying is that called sept tiktok uh yeah sept <laughs> <laughs> oh shit here we go again um okay so he wanted to know about uh stupid mistakes leading to injuries yeah yeah okay. i think you got one i already told that story falling and smacking my head in hockey yeah we, we've watched that. i have another one though that's even stupider i um when I w- was just getting a DSLR, uh, I went to Best Buy and bought a Canon T2i. Ooh, so that's slow-mo. Yeah, and that was like, it was a real game changer. It was going from, before that I had a, a thing called a flip camera. Alonzo, <laughs> look up a flip camera. So, so this is for the youngins. You had to buy a camera sh- because the, the f- iPhones and the cell phones like, didn't have good enough cameras. Oh, I remember these. And so yeah. this was a really hot camera at the time, and you held it vertically like a cell phone. So pull up the next image, the image next to it. So it's called a flip camera. Be- what the hell is even that? <laughs> because the USB stick was built into it. And so you would just record and then plug it directly into your laptop. Uh, so I had that, and that's what I was shooting on for a while. And then I finally got a Canon T2i. I bring it home. I'm like so excited to use it and uh you obviously have to buy a memory card with it so i can't remember what kind of memory card it was doesn't matter probably just fucking sd card and they sent me home with it in the security box oh and i was like so i just wanted to play with it so much right so then i was trying to figure out a way to like burst open the security box and so i was like hitting it with a hammer it wasn't working and then i was like and it's pla- like hard, clear plastic, right? And um, as sort of a goof, I was like, what if I, I was with a couple of friends, I was like, what if I grab a saw and try to like saw it open? And it was kind of one of those things where part of my brain was like, this is actually a serious, like this is actually a serious solution, but also this is like a funny, goofy, like using a saw. And I literally took like two strokes and it slid across the plastic immediately and I sawed into my finger. Oh. And it like, like I didn't get it that bad. Like it didn't go down to the bone or anything, but it just was like the most zigzaggy crisscrossy mangled little wound. Like that caused like, you know, a very odd shaped flap on my, my index finger. Oh my God. And in those moments when you're doing something stupid and then you hurt yourself, you just, you feel so dumb. Like you're like, how did I put myself in that position to, to be hurt? Like, I don't know. It's, I always find that like a hard feeling to describe of being like, just feeling so, just, just so stupid. Yeah. Where you're like, can we just rewind two seconds before I did that? Like, I just didn't need to do that at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, did you stitches or like, what no, was the, I uh, never go get stitches. I'm always just like, yeah, it'll be fine. Hmm. I'm not a stitches guy. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> then you haven't needed stitches. I, there's definitely been time when I probably needed it and I just like put a band-aid on it. Oh, uh, okay. It wasn't that gnarly though. It was like, probably like, I don't know. Was it a wood saw, like a serrated? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Ugh. Like, Ugh. A, hand, like a hand saw. Ugh. So you eventually got that camera out though. Yeah, I don't, I think I might've just had to go back. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are all these saw marks in the box? <laughs> Why is there blood all over it? <laughs> there actually was blood on it. I had I'm to wash sure. it. <laughs> oh, don't mind this lightly blooded oh, box. God. Um, I have a, yeah, I have a similar story of um, 
uh, cutting myself open on uh, we or uh, this was for a Mahalo my dude video. I think it was for the suspension tutorial, how to set up your suspension. Mm -hmm. And um, SRAM had graciously and RockShox had graciously given me a complete kit of uh, SRAM and RockShox stuff to put on my bike for that shoot. And so I was throwing on the suspension and the brakes. And when you put on new brakes on the, your mountain bike, you got to trim the hose to the correct length. And normally you would use a proper hydraulic hose cutter. It's very safe and easy to use and cuts the hose nice. But I didn't have that at the time. So I used an X-Acto knife. Mm. And <laughs> just in the way... I've done the X-Acto knife before and it's worked. But it didn't this time. And in the way I was holding the hose, when I cut it, I cut through the hose really quick. And then right into my index finger with mm. the X-Acto knife. And it, it basically... There's a scar. You can see it. See the little like thing across there. Yeah, not really. Okay, well it's there. Um, it like took off uh, maybe like a third. Oh, I see it now. I yeah, see it now. a third of the top of my finger. It's like a dimple. Yeah, and uh, it was one of the exact same thing where it happened. I look down. I can feel the pain. I see like a lot of blood gushing out, and mm -hmm. I'm like. Why did I do that? Why I I didn't need to do that. I could have figured this out another yeah. way. And then I I had to go to the hospital and um, I to get stitches because I'm a stitches boy. Mm -hmm. um, I went to Lionsgate and bitches get stitches. You know that, right? Yeah, I know. Also snitches. Well, you know what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I, hold on, I didn't, I didn't even get the stitches. So I go to Lionsgate. I'm in the waiting room. It's weird when you're like profusely bleeding because mm -hmm. you're like, I need to fix this. And they're like, well, hold on now. We've got to take in some information and process. You know, I'm, like, I'm like soaking through all of these paper towels I have in my hand. And uh, they process me. And then they give me like a bowl with saline. And then you just dip your finger in that while you wait for mm -hmm. your time to go. So I waited like an hour, got in. The doctor looks at it. He's like, Ah, just super glue it. I was like, what? Sick. He's I was, like, yeah. You I don't was want, hoping that was going to be the answer. He's like, you don't want stitches in there. It's so annoying to have in your finger. And I was like, okay. And so he just super glued it, closed it, and wrapped it all up and shot the video like two days later. That's crazy. Yeah. It was, it, don't don't mess around with exacto knives. They're so sharp and like so thin that they'll go right through you. I feel like, okay, what's the difference between an exacto knife and a box cutter? I think it's the same. I think they're different. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh. I think a box cutter is, is um, actually, I feel like an X-Acto knife is like smaller maybe. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, Alonzo, pull up difference between X-Acto knife and uh, box cutter. But I, I use the terms interchangeably. A box cutter is just a handle for a single edged razor blade and mm -hmm. sticks out just enough to slit pasteboard boxes so it bar the blade barely comes out go, go to uh go to images <laughs> hopefully there's like a comparison image yeah here we go that like orange and black one right there yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 there you go so the box cutter is usually it's like a, like you're gonna see that at a factory or something or a shipping it's got center. a little chode blade yeah it's a little chode blade and it's like a girthier handle and stuff like you, you're getting down to business whereas an exacto Damn knife boy, he thick. Exacto knife more of like a consumer product where de depend like you know there's varying sizes of them and you can do different stuff with them. Super technical. You also replace the blades on the uh, box cutter, I think the black one, mm -hmm. and then the other one you snap the blades off and it's a new blade underneath. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 Knife talk, dude. We're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, any uh, any words to chime in? All right. Yeah, good thought, good thought. Next pipe. Um, wait, I had another thing I was going to say, but I forgot what it was. Dave! It's fine. Okay. Thank, thanks, for the, it. thanks for the question, Yeah, that was Ryan. a good question, Ryan. Um, uh, this is from B -B -B Bennett. Hey, boys. Bennett here again, just answering last week's question of whether or not my speak pipe about bears was scripted or not. Look, it's a pretty strong accusation of yours, but I won't lie, there were some dot points written down. I just feel like I have to come yeah. at you high IQ intellectuals with my best foot forward. So instead, this week, we're going completely off the cuff. I'm on my walk to uni, and I'm underneath the flight path, so hopefully you guys can hear me. I also want to go on record and say that 
Dave, way back in my first podcast, accused me of having a fake Aussie accent. And that is half true, but, you know, that's a story for another day. Anyways, keep up the great work. Love the story of Dave Wait, trying to tell a very serious story last week under the sad air horn tune that Matt was playing. <laughs> so, yeah, keep it up. I'm keen as to shred the gnar in BC. And, yeah, we'll see you guys around. What was the story I was telling? I think it was your concussion story. And then he started playing the, like... like dun, dun, that dun. episode's not out yet, though. What? what? Yeah, it is. The concussion one? Is it not? That's the one I was editing last night. What's Why the sad it? story? Oh, what's the sad story one? Oh, no. We have to go back and watch. And yeah, now that I don't edit the podcast, I, I forget everything that we talk about. It's oh, great. Man. Bennett, you didn't ask us a question, but... Thank you for calling in. I want to know about his accent, though, because this time again, I'm like, up. what's with this guy's fake Australian accent? It was like dipping in and out. Bennett, can you give us like a hot 15 on your accent and... 15 minutes? 15 seconds. Oh, gosh. Like, tell the story in 15 seconds. Yeah, we just want... My guess is that he grew up either in Australia or not in Australia. And like, so he's got kind of... It's like a little bit in here, a little bit there. And, or his like father was a pilot and they like flew around a bunch mm. and he has like this mixed sort of thing. I don't yeah. know. He could have like also grown up in Australia, an adjacent country, like in New Zealand to Australia or even like South Africa to Australia or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I always find it interesting when people call in on this podcast and other places and they're in transit or doing something else. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Oh, you just had no, like you just had no time in your day other than <laughs> like, other than the noisiest time of the day. Yeah. You're or like, you're in the middle of something. You're like, this is, this is when this needs to happen. When you're sucking shit, you just gotta call. You're not just like thought. sitting on the couch after work and you're like, yeah, I'll, I'll pipe in. I guess though, uh, maybe they're listening to the podcast in that moment. Oh, like they're working and they've got the podcast on and we remind them to send in a speak pipe and they, they're like, I'll do it right now. I think that's actually exactly what's happening. Must be right. So he's walking to university, right? He's got the pod in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's funny because I can't actually imagine anyone actually listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> I can. Like, I don't, radio. I don't think about it. Oh, I see. Like, I don't actually visualize. It's very strange. I, I bet there'll be a day that comes when we're walking down the street or driving mm -hmm. or something and we see someone and they're actively listening to the podcast and we can hear it. Uh, I don't know if we can hear it, but they'll oh, see us and be like, right. Oh, I'm listening to the, I'm right now. I'm listening to it. <sighs> I mean, that's, that's the dream right there. It is the dream. And I think it will happen. <laughs> I mean, it took a long time for it to happen. Like with IFHD and Mahalo, my dude, but like right. there were times when we'd be on there. I just watched the video that came out, like not. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes I think there's a very old video. I can no way I can pull it up anymore. But I was at, I remember being at a concert mm -hmm. and one row in front of me, someone was watching shit Canadian say on their phone, <laughs> like before the concert started. Okay. But I like looked down, I was like, shit Canadian say, yeah. he's watching his phone and they were at a concert. And I, I wonder if he knows that that guy is right behind him watching him watch that video. No, there's no, why would he know? I know, I know, exactly. But uh, I was, just, that was like a moment where I was like, oh shit. Yeah, people people watch these videos. I guess I saw a video um, Rain Wilson posted, and he was on a plane, and someone was watching The Office like right next to him, or like across across the aisle, and he was like, and they obviously had no idea he was there. Yeah, I feel like he now especially looks so different that yeah, but know. also like you're not necessarily you know turning your head around on a plane and clocking people. He looks like a regular guy too. Yeah, that's true. When did you have that those moments with like hoodwinked or IFHC stuff? Where people recognized us? Not just recognized, but like in a in a way where you're like, oh shit, like they're they're into it. It's not just like, oh, I saw that video of you guys. Yeah, I mean, when um, Mike and I used to go to like bars in North Van because our audience was largely like people our age at the time, like early twenties in North Vancouver. People would come up to us and be like, oh, yeah, I really liked this video. Or, like, they would, like, quote quote things or reference specific things. And that was an interesting experience. Yeah? Why? Just because it's, you, you feel low-key famous. And you're like. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, it's, the th it's not the thing. It's not the reason you make the things, but it's a novel concept. 
yeah exactly you make it there. in the beginning especially you make it because it's fun and mm -hmm. it's just like i don't know i i equated it to like going biking sometimes like you just do it because you're like i enjoy this mm -hmm. it's like good kind of escapism from your life that time but now it's just our job <laughs> it's like making anything else though right like the there's so many jobs or activities you can do where you're doing it and there's no end product right you're like you're an accountant or whatever and you're I guess you have reports. I don't know what you do as an accountant, but like, it's kind of just like you're just working or you're a salesperson. You're making sa like there's, but there's nothing to like look at afterwards or hold on to. And the cool thing about doing something creative is like you have that thing and it exists and you can refer to it and other people can consume it. And it's like, it's, it's something that came from within you that now lives outside of you, mm -hmm. which is interesting. It's interesting. It's good and bad. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you make some bad shit. Oh yeah. There's tons of bad stuff. There's, I have unlisted videos that the world will oh, never, yeah. never see again. They don't need to. It's when I tried to do too much acting and I was like, no. Oh, is, come on. It, no, it's bad. I saw you in that Plaza one ad. <laughs> <laughs> Crossing my arms and nodding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the, the end of the role. Didn't we, we were going to watch an old video, weren't we? Oh yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the, hold on, hold on. Let's, let's intro this a bit. So <laughs> this is on your, you and Mike's YouTube mm -hmm. channel. Hoodwinked. Hoodwinked. And this is Films. the first time we worked together? No, this is the second or third maybe. Okay. Casayolo was the first? Casayolo was the first thing we did. Yeah. Yeah. So you and, uh, you and Matt, I think Matt reached out to us. He's right next to us. Yeah. Matt, yeah. you want to chime in? No? Okay. Uh, Matt reached out to us. I think he directly messaged us through YouTube, which no longer exists. That's so wild. And uh, he was like, oh, we think your videos are funny. Do you want to collab? I don't know if he used the word collab, but do you want to <laughs> do a video together? And so we did the video called Cause I Yolo, which was a music video um, that everyone said was very Lonely Island-like. Oh. Did but it, talk, it is very talk? lonely. It, it was. Is, it is very lonely, lonely island, island inspired. For sure. For sure. But then they literally did a video afterwards called YOLO. Yeah. A year later. A year later. Anyways, we did that. I was like, I made like a cameo at the beginning and the end of that. Um, and that was fun. We shot that with Peter Chow at, mm -hmm. at his at his house. Where where was that? Was that in Richmond? Mm, Richmond Surrey? adjacent. Yeah. Uh, out there. Yeah. In the boons. Um and then the next thing we made was this. And this was like six months to a year later. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we were like, okay, you guys come do this cool music video. <laughs> and then we'll come do some silly sketch at your place. Well, no, this was an idea I had um, previously <laughs> prior to you guys. Because um, Mike's girlfriend at the time... Um, <laughs> had a mom her mom was like relatively young like her mom was like 20 when she had her so her mom was like 40 at the time oh my god and we were like 20 and we would joke of how funny would it be if she woke up one morning and i was just like downstairs making breakfast and was like good morning sweetheart <laughs> and like it was like i'm your new dad <laughs> and uh so that was the whole origin of the concept yeah it was the <laughs> What, what do you want to call it? Like the, the MILF, MILF porn before that was like a thing of its day. <laughs> this video. <laughs> yeah. So anyways, should we just play it? Yeah. <laughs> and this is my Whoa. old downstairs where I used to live at my parents' house. Whoa. Hey man, what are you doing here? Were we, were we supposed to hang out today? I may have f***ed your mom last night. Right it's really funny, man. I totally f***ed your mom too. No, I definitely f***ed your mom last night. Oh, by the way, where'd you get that rope? Because my mom bought the same one from Winners on Sale. Oh my god, you f***ed my mom. Uh, twice. I did not see this coming. You know, <laughs> your mother and I have been talking and uh, she thinks you and I should spend a little more time together. What are you talking about? We're best friends. We spend like every day together. You're the background on my phone. Yeah, but I mean, it's father and son. I feel like I have a lot I can teach you. You're only 15 months older than me. And wait, how long has this been going on for? A while. The acting is great. She was just playing Wii Sports in her room. Why does she have a television in her room? Oh my god, you're right. So, what do you say to a little father son bonding? A sport? Ooh. This is my nightmare. 
So there's actually a video. Would it be nice <laughs> oh God, copyright. No, 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 it was a cover so we could use it. Oh, perfect. That's the reason I use this. I had to test multiple uploads. So for the for the listener, um, it's a montage of me and Jason doing father son activities. Wait, Lonzo, turn down a bit. And uh, so he, I'm like pushing him on the swings. We're I'm teaching him how to ride a bike. Uh, what else? We're playing soccer together. Yeah. So You're- so so there's um yeah there's a video with um. <laughs> What's his name? Um, John Ralphio. What's his name in real life? Ben Schwartz. Yeah. And the guy from Stranger Things. And it's almost exactly this video. No way. I, we got to play it after this. Oh, my God. Here, skip forward a few few beats here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, my yeah. God. I forgot how long this was, dude. Yeah, it's because I wanted to match it to the end of the song, and I didn't think to, like, clip the song down. Wow, these are really comfortable. <laughs> oh yeah, we got matching robes now and backwards hats. You know what? I didn't expect to say this, but I had a really great time vlogging with you. Dad. <laughs> Two. Son. So you're f***ing my mom. Yeah, it's really gross. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, there's a classic. That was a classic. Man, I honestly, I think I erased most of the filming of that from my mind. Really? I feel like I remember it pretty vividly. I was drinking real coffee and I wasn't really a co- I don't know why I thought that was necessary. You can't tell what I'm drinking because I'm like sipping from a mug. <laughs> oh, oh, in the video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And I didn't drink coffee at that time and I was like hating it. But I was like, yeah, you know, I got to dedicate to my craft. So Matt shot that? Matt shot that. And then, and then I edited it. You edited it. Okay. Yeah, wow. That would have been 2000... It's 10 years. 2013. 13. Oh my yeah. God. It was February 2013. Alonzo, look up um, Ben Schwartz and uh, Joe Keery. Um, yeah, it, it's, cra- it's honestly wild how... Yeah, yeah, the, this top one. So skip forward a little bit. What is... Th- okay. So the whole joke is how they look kind of alike. Okay. Um, keep skipping forward. There's like a montage part, and the montage is like just like ours. I wonder if they saw our video. Probably. Keep going. Yeah, it's like near the end, I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The shaving? Yeah, yeah. Start it there, start it there. Can somebody help me? So there was an interview about how they're like look-alike and like it's like shot the exact same. We didn't do the tie, but like it just felt so similar to me. It's kind of like it's an obvious concept. There's but like the jumping, (laughs) right? We did this exactly. We did this. Yeah. We did the biking. Man, I thought it was North Vancouver for a second. Yeah, we did the biking. And I, I'm pretty sure I did, like, something like a fist pump there. I shook my f- fist, like, anyways. We're obviously, like, working off of similar tropes, but... Yeah, yeah. I remember seeing that for the first time, being like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and then he was like, I fucked your mom. It just goes to show, though, that, like, in, like, comedy and stuff, there's only... If you're doing a thing, there's only so many... Like, you're doing, like, a fake father-son thing. How many different things can you do? Oh, you're teaching him to bike, you're teaching him to shape. Like, there's those, like, just the obvious things. Yeah. And Playing I think a sport. It, it's still funny. Like, yeah. depending on the characters and, like, yeah. the subtle differences. Yeah, you can do something a million different ways. Yeah. Wait, how many views does that other one have? Uh, mine? Yeah. Right, if I fucked your mom? Yeah. Like, f- like 14,000. I wonder how many more it'll have after oh, this podcast. Trillions. <laughs> if not billions. Oh, I remember what I was going to talk about. I started, um, speaking of like doing things a million different ways, I started reading the screenplay to Superbad last night. Okay. It's really interesting because like a lot of it's in the movie. It's obviously not a one-to-one to what's in the movie because I haven't really read movie screenplays before. But I just was, I had downloaded a bunch of them a while ago and I was just trying to like read something on my iPad because I'm trying to read more. 
because I don't read very much. <laughs> it makes me feel stupid. Um, you are the smartest one on the pod. It's not true. But uh, anyway, so I was reading it, and the things that aren't in the movie that are in the screenplay, I'm like, yeah, that was a good cut. Yeah, that was a good cut. Or the things that are added, I was uh, impressed by. So, like, do you know the opening scene of Superbad where... Comes, picks him up in the car. Yeah, he's picked yeah. up in the car, and the mom kind of leans over, and he's like, oh, I'm so jealous you got to suck on those things. <laughs> like, talking about how Seth's talking about how Evan's mom is hot. Yeah. And then he goes, yeah, well, you got to suck on your dad's dick. <laughs> That's not in the script. Oh, that's so good. I was like, ah, oh, that was a sick, like on the day, like improv or whatever. But, uh, yeah, it was interesting to like read. And then they wrote that when they were really young and the things that got cut felt like things that like a 20 year old would write. Oh, like yeah, they, yeah. like it was things that felt a bit too overwritten or a bit too like, I don't know. And it's just like, yeah, no, you tightened it up, you tightened it up. And then I started to wonder if they like, they shot things that got taken out or if they just didn't even shoot them i imagine they would have shot it wouldn't you they might have on the day just been like we don't need that yeah that's but true anyways i thought it was an interesting experience no that's fascinating how long is the screenplay generally your screenplay is a page per minute yeah so it's like 110 pages or something right yeah hmm. yeah whirling whirling there you are well do we have any more videos we could watch um, Jeffrey's funeral, but Matt's in that, so we could maybe save that. Oh, and yeah. Mike's in that. Okay, okay. That's the only video that's like just the two of us, so it felt special. Yeah. Yeah. It was the, uh, the blossoming of a, a beautiful friendship. Beautiful <laughs> friendship. I mean, we right off the bat proclaimed we were best friends, according to the screensaver. <laughs> Oh my god, that's so funny. So what I also did was I went through and I collected scroll scroll up. So let's start let's start at the top here. Uh, I collected videos of Jason from my phone. So these never went anywhere, but we would do these like weather reports on shoots we were doing, <laughs> and I think they're really funny. So play this one. Well, as you can see, we're here in North Vancouver, and it is a beautiful day. Couldn't be better. 10 degrees, a little chilly actually, but you know what? We're battling sun, we're battling dryness, and we're gonna play ball as hard as we can. Stay tuned for more. <laughs> Was that? On? All right, weather report oh, God. out here. It's a storm, a seasonal storm. As you can see, we have lightning, 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 thunder. It's about 400 degrees. Oh my God. This was great. It was like... Oh, Revelstoke. Yeah. yeah. We are trying to do a fan meetup. And uh, mountain biking is not in the forecast for today. However, free stuff is. We're doing giveaways. It's going to be exciting. Stay tuned. That's all for me now, folks. Oh, yeah. No, no. Let it play. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, cut the commercial. <laughs> um... Yeah, so the first one we just played was from uh, our Fuel EXE ad that was yeah. called My Best Friend on the Trail. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was shooting at a house in North Vancouver. And I would just randomly point my phone at you and be like, do a weather report. And then you would just say <laughs> whatever. And I find them all funny. <laughs> and then the second one was in Revelstoke on our I Only Red Park tour. And we were doing a fan meetup that day. And it was like raining so fucking hard. And then like lightning s storm. Man, sidebar. Um, Matt and I just did Whistler opening weekend mm -hmm. and a lot of people asked if we're doing a tour again this year, mm. a lot. And obviously we're in a mountain bike space where, and we're like at a bike park that was in the tour. So it kind of yeah. like, a, it's not to be unexpected, but I mean, we, ch we chat about internally, like that series didn't like explode. It didn't do like phenomenally well. Views wise, it wasn't views off wise. the charts, but yeah, it was well enjoyed it. Yeah, I think For it was well that received. saw it, it just didn't get out to as many people as we'd hoped. Exactly. Um, I still really like all the videos. And, and like, mm -hmm. going back to what you said about having, like, things that you've created on the internet, I'm like, this just is, like, the ultimate video diary of a really fun summer. Yeah, totally. It, it And the fact that it, f it feels a little bit more solid than other projects we sometimes do. Yeah. Right, where you're, like... You know, there was an overarching concept. There was a, a crew of people. It felt like it was a real experience for us. Like, 
yeah, there's something to really hold on to there. And it, it's the type of thing, too, where I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, a year from now or six months or whatever, it somehow just, like, hit the algorithm and they all just got a ton more views. Totally. You know, like, because it's entertaining, I think. Yeah. And we yeah. put our fucking blood, sweat, and tears into that. Yeah, we punched well above our weight in terms of production value with all yeah. the, like, the interviews and... On the editing was... The like, editing was <sighs> us monster. as well. Yeah, huge, huge amount of footage to go through. But, yeah, I mean, to those people asking, we're not doing it this year, but yeah. maybe in the future, I think we're trying to figure out a way how to do it so that it doesn't kill us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Which means we need more money. Generally money and, and support, like production support. Right, which is money. Which is money. Um, and we want to do a new place, obviously, too. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't want to do BC again. We want to go somewhere where we haven't been. Maybe it's America. Maybe it's over a pond in New Zealand or mm -hmm. uh, in Europe. But uh, we'll try and figure something out. Yeah, it's cool. People are asking specifically about it. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. it's on their mind, too, because the bike parks are just opening. So they're like, whoa. Man, it, it was weird, though. Like, opening weekend this year was probably the quietest I've ever seen it. Mm. Mostly due, in fact, I think they, they tore down a chairlift. The right. Simmons, the main chairlift. Um, and they're building up a, a bigger one in its place. But I think because of that, a lot of people are like, no, I'm not going like just give me long lift lines. Right. And it almost had the inverse effect where so many people didn't go that it was actually super chill and there was no lift lines and got, it got up immediately. And yeah, it was good. I think that video will be out by the time this pod is out. Yeah, it should be. Should be. So if you haven't seen it, go watch the whistle opening weekend video. What do we call it? We're just calling it whistle opening weekend. It's Whistmas, baby. I should have that on the soundboard. You should. Great success. Any Big Al fans in opening weekend? Um, wait, what do you mean, Big Al fans? Yeah, okay, let's pass over that one. Wait, wait no, I don't understand the question. I'm talking about my fans, like the, the fan base. Like the, that saw you in the tour videos? Or just like on the channel where like, oh, I love that guy. <laughs> Who gives a shit? Anyway, moving on. <laughs> oh, I, I, I did also want to mention, I'm wearing a feeding off each other's mm -hmm, shirts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. new merch ladies and gentlemen feeding off each other's do you shirt. want to stand up and do a twirl i can do that hold on i got a lot of cables yeah yeah you fill the air while i no a lot of weight Stop. wait I'm what fucking, are you doing oh my god what are you doing it's I, gone I, rogue I burned it in i was just getting it ready i hold burned on. it into my eyes no all right how do we how do we make it so it can be seen are you gonna go to the wide camera yeah, I'll go to the wide. okay so jason is standing up he's wearing our feeding off each other shirt now you'll notice that the branding is different than the logo of the podcast the reason behind that is we're trying to make it not just be a podcast thing but just for people that you know like cool phrases and vibes and like to feed off each other they can wear the shirt without feeling like they're you know part of the the corporate part of the corporate sponsorship of this show um but it's using the utilizing the same sort of uh you know, pinky red and, and blue color scheme. So it does feel tethered to the podcast in that way. Now you'll notice, um, if you looked at it, oh, wait, okay, Alonso now play it with, play this without sound. Yeah, definitely play without sound. So um, this was in Whistler opening weekend. Yeah. Um, at a club called Mojo's, I believe. And they had some black lights going on and we realized that the shirt glows in the dark and, uh, yeah, look at that. It just pops. And for some reason, the thread in the collar as well oh, was yeah. in the dark. Interesting. I think it's just the, yeah, the coloring. So if, yeah, if you look at the design there, yeah. Okay. Stop there. Stop there. It's a, it's a shock of hand, but it's got a mouth to feed off each other. So it's really tying together the elements of the, uh, oh, yeah. of the mountain biking culture, but with, uh, with a little bit of flair. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was funny. We were before this, we were in um, another establishment called Brandy's, which is mm -hmm. the keg at night in Whistler. Not the strip club. No, I don't think there's a strip club called Brandy's. In Vancouver, there is. Yeah, no, in Whistler. Well, I, I'm just clarifying. Okay. People hear Brandy's and they're from this area. They're gonna be like, oh yeah, the keg. <laughs> anyway. I was at the bar, and uh, there was a female at the bar, uh, and, uh, and we were both ordering drinks, and uh, she looks over, and she goes, oh, feeding off each other, and I was like, oh, maybe she knows the podcast. <laughs> She's like, 
Are you, are you into like vampire stuff? <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> boom, roasted. No, I was like, no, it's a podcast I do with my friends. <laughs> and she's like, it's like really popular and people think it's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but internally <laughs> I mean that was the reaction I got When I told my one of my friends the title He's like what the fuck is that It was like a vampire thing <laughs> <laughs> Oh that's hilarious Hey so support us vampires here on feeding off each other And uh, <laughs> check out the merch Did anybody give you positive feedback on the shirt though Yeah a lot of people were like oh that's sick It looks really cool, good cool, cool, Yeah, cool. And I think they liked that it wasn't um, You know like wasn't like feeding off each other podcast no with like the microphone no no, no no that's not the vibe we're going for no 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 so yeah you, did we mention where they can get it mahala my dude dot com dot com dot com and uh yeah order yourself one should be in, should be in stock now yeah limited quantities limited quantities for sure i don't know we're i actually don't know if that's true i'm just trying to create the pressure <laughs> one day only it was one day only one shirt only one shirt only yeah but it, random it'll size shrink, yeah it'll just fit you you it just add me. water and it fits so lonzo scroll up here a little bit what else do i have scroll upwards it's the opposite of down <laughs> yeah okay so here's another video um jason during the island red park tour was the driver of the rv because uh, i refuse to drive it because i hate driving large vehicles uh and he was the ultimate road hog so let's see what we were talking about here how long is this um, 55 seconds 15. all right we'll 15. start it see, see see what it is i didn't watch it Weather report? Oh, another weather report. Uh, we're getting up in a white... <laughs> this isn't the RV or the Island Ride Park Tour. Oh, no, where is this? This is on the way to <laughs> Moab. Uh, luckily, the Hyundai Elantra is doing just... Oh, that car was such a piece of shit. Back to you. So, uh, explain that clip a little more, because we drove from Denver, Colorado, mm -hmm. where it was bright and sunny and warm, to Moab, Utah, which involved going through the Rockies mm -hmm. and it was October. I want to say, yeah, late October pre Halloween, pre Halloween. And, uh, yeah, the weather was not so good on the highway and actually snowed, hailed, thunderstorm, like everything. And we had this crappy Hyundai Elantra. I might have already told this story on our, nah, on our podcast, but, uh, yeah, it had summer tires on it. So it was, was it summer tires? Summer tires. Not all seasons. No. Dude, that car, like, like I'm used to like Toyotas and Hondas and like, you know, even like the lowest model is still like a decent car. That car felt like it was put together with like popsicle sticks. Yeah. Like, like you could, like it felt like it would just like combust if you got in an accident. Oh yeah. Like just fall apart. Like rattles everywhere. Oh, it was terrible. And the ergonomics were so bad and like. Just everything about it, I fucking hated. It was the first modern car that I've been in in a while where I was like, oh, I don't like this. No, it was so bad. <laughs> um, I don't think we need to watch this one. I feel like we've, we've done our we've done our due diligence on the, <laughs> the weather reports. I just, it's like I, I have these videos in my phone or photos of people and, and things, and then I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. Yeah, totally. The oh, last thing that, that's the photo. Yeah, go to the on couch. Screen yeah, yeah. This was this was on the screen, and I fucked your mom. Where was this? This was in the downstairs. We recreated like a partying photo. Oh, I, I thought this was a legitimate party. No. Oh, it's fake. This was for the video. Oh my God. We took it that day and like put the flash on. I thought we did a good job. That's so funny. The fact that it well, tricked for you. years, I was like, oh, that was, I guess, a house party we were at. So go to the next photo. No. Nope. That's a video. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah. This was the couch for New Bike Day, right? Uh, yep, yeah, it was. So we went and picked up this couch in East Van, and it could not have been more of a pain in the ass to get. <laughs> it was free, right? Yeah, it's free. I assume, yeah. Uh, it, but it like picked, it, like fit the color scheme of the video vibe, or like the vibe of the Pit Vipery purple, whatever speckled outfits we were wearing. And uh, Jason has a rooftop tent on his truck. And it fit like, exactly the size of your truck. Like you didn't have like an inch to spare. No. And uh, not that I do normally. <laughs> uh, Bazinga. But also the length of the bed is six feet. Mm -hmm. And I think that couch was six feet. And it was like you closed it and it was just right up against it. It was crazy. 
but the backyard it was in too, it couldn't fit through the like laneway um, and like fence, like the gate. So we had to lift it over into their neighbor's backyard and like swing. It was such a pain in the ass. But it's worth it. It's worth it. It was in the video. It was. It, as long as it gets used. Yeah, like, totally. That's the, that's the big thing. But I remember thinking it was so funny that it fit exactly. Like there's nothing else in that bed. <laughs> Except couch. All right. What else were we going to talk about? I was, well, I was just going to, I saw your leg bandage. Oh yeah. You, you got big, to... you got big leg news. Yeah. Transition. Okay, here. Hold on. Uh, uh, uh. I guess, can you, I don't know. I don't know where we can see what. You can kick it up on that thing, you can see it. So, so I broke my leg playing hockey seven and one half years ago. Um, And. uh, Oh my God. (laughs) Speaking of stupid injuries. (laughs) um, Some guy cross checked me after the final whistle. Fucker. Uh, And I got, I was in the hospital for four days and I got a metal rod through my tibia to support the broken tibia and broken fibula, which they just leave, by the way. If you break your fibula, they're just like, yeah, it'll figure itself out. Um, And then they put two screws in my ankle and one at the top of my tibia, sort of near my knee. And about six months ago, Jason and I were talking. I don't know why we're talking about screws (laughs) in legs. We're talking about like screwing each other. It's like screwing off each other. Screwing each other. But um, Jason had uh, an ankle break, a horrible, horrible ankle break, and he got screws in his ankle. And he said when he got them out, it was a great relief. So that inspired me to get the screws, the hardware out of my leg. And uh, so I scheduled an appointment and I booked it after hockey season. And uh, about two weeks ago, I got the screws taken out of, three screws taken out of my leg. And uh, yeah, it was a fun experience getting surgery. <laughs> Can you put your leg back on the, the arm of the chair? That's where it showed best. Oh. Um, so, so, so I go into the hospital and you, you do a lot of waiting at a hospital as one does. And I just like, I like don't know what to do with myself. And so I'm just like on my phone and whatever. Anyway, so I finally get into the like pre-surgery area and you get in the gown and you're doing oh, all the things. sexy, sexy And gown. you're just feeling kind of like, you're feeling like just sort of like a low hum of anxiety because part of me thinks like you're not going to die getting this sort of surgery, but like you could, you could, you sign a paper that says you might, you're like, I'm going to go sleepy sleep and let's see what happens. That's what she said. Um, but I, I still like, wasn't, I was like, whatever. I, I kind of like, it's like when I fly anywhere, I just, part of me thinks like I might die. Same. And I, I kind of make, I make like low key peace with it every time I fly. Same. Like I just go like, okay. It's like, I like have to like relinquish the control cause I like being in control. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so all, that's all to say that the most nervous part I got at though, was they're like, oh, we're gonna measure, measure and weigh you before surgery. So we know like your height and your weight. And I'm six feet tall. <laughs> I'm in danger. And you know, do you know the controversy about being six feet tall? Mm, that's the sickest height to be ever. No, the joke is no one is five eleven. Oh. If you're five eleven, you you're say s- you're six feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And for years, like I measured myself at six feet at one point, Uh-oh. and I was like, I'm ne- I'm not measuring myself again. That's it. I'm done. I am six feet tall. And so she's like, well, We're gonna measure you, and I was like. Oh fuck, is this the day I learn I'm actually 5'11? <laughs> and I was like getting a little bit worried about it, and then we go. And I was 6.04 inches tall. Ooh. So it's like six and a half. Feet. I didn't rig shit! And I was like, yes. Like I didn't, like, I, it wasn't even just like a squeak above, it was like, it was like a good little You're buffer. In, like yeah. a good buffer. So even if like I got remeasured, it's like, I feel like there's enough buffer that I'll at least be six feet. So. That was the most harrowing part of the surgery experience. <laughs> Getting measured. And then, uh, actually I actually have a video. Actually, I could send Alonzo photos of my leg for, for context. Ooh, yeah. Get us that hot, hot, gross leg content. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. Uh, oh, I got a photo of the screws in my Excellent. leg. Excellent. Um, did you, um, did they, that you keep the screws? Yep. Oh, good. Yep. But they only gave me two of them. Oh. So then I was nervous that they didn't take all three out. And to this moment, I'm not 1,000% sure that they're all out of my all out of my leg. Do you get a follow-up x-ray? 
Uh, I don't know. Mm. I would assume so. I'm going yeah. in. I go in on Thursday to get the staples taken out of my leg. Oh, nice. That's always fun when they just use like a pretty normal staple remover on your body. Right. This is what I was going to say to you. This was what I was going to say. When you were talking about the super glue. Yeah. It's something that always strikes me as kind of crazy. So those are the screws that were in my leg and ankle. Oh, yeah. Those are big daddies, They're hey? big daddies. So those, like, they were the majority of the width of my ankle. Yeah, yeah. When I actually, like, held them up to my ankle afterwards, I was like, this is fucked up. So the thing I was going to say to you is it's kind of absurd that, like, you know, medical things are very specialized. But um, then they just use, like, hardware or tape and glue and staples well i don't know if they use oh tape i guess in the outside yeah tape or whatever tape was i didn't even mean to say tape but like you know what i mean they're using like tape and glue and like just these like daily products so yeah, yeah those are oh, those are the Jesus. staples you can zoom in on that's like a little out of focus but yeah. still at the top nice yellow bruises. yeah a nice healthy yellow glow on your leg yeah so that's what i've been dealing with but uh it's almost oh hey Oh, no. <laughs> it's almost been two weeks, so the staples no longer really bother me, and um, the wounds are pretty... Like, I can move pretty normally now. That's good. I just get slight sort of aching, because I think there's holes in my bones. Yeah, and it's also just still healing, for sure. But um, it's a funny thing, the first few days where you're like, oh, I feel like I've been cut into. <laughs> like, it's like a strange sensation. This was me after surgery. I don't actually remember taking this video. <laughs> <laughs> this is me being wheeled. You vlogging right now? Yeah, I just was like, this would be novel. And I was on some sort of drugs, probably. Yeah, a little cup of something, scissor, yeah. I presume. Because I, you can't eat or drink for X amount of time. Mm. But anyways, so then I, um, I went back to my parents' house for the night after surgery to sleep, and um, my mom went and picked up a prescription of, I believe it's called Toradol. Tramadol. Tramadol. I'm familiar which is an opioid mm -hmm. and I took like one or two the first night before sleep. I took like one or two the next day and I took like two the next day or whatever. So I probably took like five to six pills in total. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. I got so fucking sick, like not in a, not in a cool <laughs> way. <laughs> I got so ill from those pills. Mm. Um, Fatality. So like two a day, like three days after surgery, I was like, sweating through my sheets oh my God. i couldn't even watch tv i couldn't keep my eyes open but not just because i was tired like my body was just like shutting down like i i went through full allergic reaction to it and uh or withdrawals i don't think it was it's not withdrawals if it's that close yeah like, and if you're actively like taking i'm actively it. taking it oh, yeah. I, I think it was a, I, I would characterize it an allergic reaction yeah uh and then so i chat gpt <laughs> as you should Torid toridol tramadol tramadol fuck tramadol side effects and there was like eight and i had the first seven <laughs> it was like loss of appetite the um, fever, yeah, fever nausea nausea dizziness yeah, dizziness yeah. like all of them had like constipation more poop talk uh yeah so i didn't eat for two days didn't go to the didn't like number two for like two or three days it was fucking awful. It was way worse than the surgery, way worse than the wounds. Like, so I will never take another opioid for the rest of my life. Like I, I'll deal with any amount of pain over that. It was right. so much worse. I said, if I felt that way, if you told me I was gonna feel that way for like a month, I would fucking kill myself. <laughs> it was that brutal. Jesus. Yeah, it, it was terrible. <sighs> and I had the same Sucks. thing with my initial surgery. Because oh, really? I was on morphine yeah, yeah. for like four days and then they gave me Percocets to go home with. <laughs> At that time, yeah, it was actually worse because I was on stuff for an extended period and those are all opioids. I think Percocets are stronger too than a... Uh, Tramadol is like right. one level above a Tylenol 3. Yeah. Anyways, I, I just like... <sighs> is that not Tylenol 4? Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah. So that was my my fun post surgery experience. I that was, sucks, man. Yeah. But now you're on the you're on the mend. I am. Yeah, it's weird because I I've also had the the trammies and uh, for both my ankle surgeries and I was okay. I did experience the constipation, more poo talk, but uh, the rest was okay. I mean, 
you definitely always just you're gonna feel like shit because you've been sliced into and put to sleep and but it was it, it was a different yeah yeah definitely. like for the two days prior to the drug stuff i just was feel like i was just feeling like not fully like i was tired and stuff but i was like fine and then mm. phew, man that was so next level <laughs> but now you're you're in the clear yeah now i feel quite good so rock and roll rock and roll and so you got eight screws out of your ankle i think it was eight yeah that's crazy yeah there was yeah a lot of damage in there <laughs> a lot of stuff holding it together did you do much physio yeah a lot of physio yeah yeah there's a good guy i'll shout him out aaron doby oh. here in uh aaron doby premiere yeah <laughs> that's good um here. he's a doby yeah he is a doby that's crazy adobe physio pro <sighs> And uh, he, he's a mountain biker, and now he's a sports physiotherapist. And he was like, he reached out to me when I broke mm, my ankle. Because it was a very public break. Yeah. Up. Break up. <laughs> he was hustling to yeah. his clients. And uh, before that, I was always like, ah, physio, like whatever. I'll just like, walk around. <laughs> physio schmizzy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'll be fine. It's just going to heal. And uh, he got me on the, the right program, and, and it definitely helped a lot. You should do physio, people. Yeah. So, wait, what would you say it is at percentage wise from original, like one to a hundred? Your hundred and ten. Your ankle's a hundred and ten. Better than it was. Fuck off. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm not even kidding because I've broken both ankles. <laughs> my left one I broke when I was much younger. Jesus. And not as severely. Like kind of. Was my, it also mountain biking? Uh, yeah. Yeah. At a skate park. Yeah. And um, it was. Ba I just rolled my ankle really bad, basically, mm. and I like broke the bottom off the bone so i didn't even need surgery right but i i was like oh yeah two weeks i'll be fine and i'll just go biking and i'll be my physio and i don't need to do anything else and now it is the biggest floppiest ankle oh, <laughs> like, so your other ankle sucks yeah my other ankle's horrible like i'll i roll it walking down the sidewalk pretty yeah. regularly brutal and uh because i did the strengthening in the right one it's like like solid like rock solid yeah, yeah. it's because my ankle never fully healed from break when i broke my leg never it's, fully healed yeah because like when i broke my leg the ankle was like i probably tore a bunch of stuff oh yeah like, like the, all your ligaments and yeah stuff. like it never got like really diagnosed because you're just like dealing with the break yeah but uh it's still kind of like gummy and gross Ooh. you yeah. can do physio still i know i'm going to oh do some work on it hell yeah i feel like we talk a lot about a lot of injuries on this show i mean we are mountain bikers slash sports guys it's true it's true the idea of physio is like you strengthen the muscles around the broken bone and that promotes the bone to heal itself mm, that's not really the point it's just to think so. it's just to like heal the the muscles and stuff in a way that like it's pushes you a little bit it's sustainable but like uncomfortable it's beyond what you would do in your normal activity because it's more concentrated to those specific areas of your body yeah and it's like for an ankle it's like the biggest thing you probably find this too is like your dorsiflexion which is how much your knee can go over your toes mm -hmm. like walking Terrible. upstairs is like a is a big one um and getting that back is the toughest when you break your ankle because it, yeah. it's such a big like a set of ligaments or there's gonna be someone out there that knows a lot more but that that's the one where you would never normally other than walking upstairs like really push it mm -hmm. and like physio will make you push it that like way further than you yeah. regularly do like people that are really into um like flexibility training and like certain types of like strength training of their whole body would be doing those exercises anyways but the average person doesn't just do those exactly like they're they're focused on ankle mobility and knee mobility and you know, hip joint whatever it's funny because like now that i sometimes google that stuff like instagram will be like hey do you want like uh videos of dudes just like um working out their hips and i'm like kind of <laughs> like i should because i have really tight hips <laughs> let's go I, uh, you know what i had to do i started getting so many theo vaughn clips oh, on instagram God. that i had to start and i think a lot of them are funny yeah he is funny but i had to start like disliking them to like tell instagram that i didn't just want to see that because it was like all i was seeing and it's like it's just him being like you know i used to live uh, with with a guy in, uh, on the floor of his room and you know when he would go to work i'd, I'd crawl into his bed and there's nothing like being in the warmth of another man <laughs> just like <laughs> so many of these theoisms goodbye uh, anyways well. 
It's about that time. Anything else you want to chat about? Um, Matt, you got anything to say? No. No. Um, Still no. Uh, Did you take a phone call? <laughs> sorry? Was that phone always there? Yeah, I guess so. Huh. Anyways, um, I had, we could talk about Dave. Oh, or, more Dave talk. Or we could talk about Entourage because I've been watching Entourage and I know you love Entourage. I love Entourage is for the fans out there, my number one TV show ever. I've probably watched it through <laughs> five full times in my life. And then also like sporadically episodes here and there. However, I haven't watched it in a number of years. It is I'm not as fresh. The perfect background show. Yes. Cause it like nothing ma there's no stakes. Yes. It's just like, hey, which hot chick is Vinny going to screw this week? Yeah. <laughs> like it's just is he going like, to get the movie? Yeah, but it's going to be a crazy way he gets it. Oh, he got the movie, but the director don't like him so much. <laughs> He's going to have to wine and dine that director, and it's going to get a little wild. <laughs> like, there's so many of the same scenarios that play out, like, three or four times in that show, where it's like, I don't know, the, Vinny, the director's not so sure about you, and he's like... Put me in a room with them. I'll charm his pants off. And everyone's like, yeah, Vinny, you go get him. Like, like the whole show. <laughs> hey, that's is, what you're a star, Vinny. <laughs> the whole show is like Vince wanting to do something. And then like all his buddies just being like, yeah, you got it. And like, um, like the Eric character who plays, who's his manager, E, yeah. he, um, He's a manager and his only client for the first five seasons is Vinny, basically. <laughs> I'm like, this is not a sustainable career to be the manager of one actor. Yeah. And like, he will be doing anything in his life. Like, he'll be like with his girlfriend and she'll be like mad at him. And then Vinny will call and he'll be like, hey, I need help like doing like the dumbest shit. And he'll be like, sorry, babe, duty calls. And I'm like, no, that's just like a friend request. <laughs> like, like, like uh, the last episode I watched, Vinny had a stalker. Hmm. And, uh, or he thought he had a stalker. And so they get this whole security team and they're doing all the security stuff and, uh, he's at work. And then Vinny's like, you got to help me figure out the security stuff. And it's just like, they're all there, but none of them need to be there. They're just like these security guards that are setting up like, you know, bulletproof glass in the house and stuff like that. Oh, I remember like, that episode. That's just so dumb. And there's just so many like homophobic moments and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Season one is, uh, like the whole show is basically like no homo, the show. Yeah. Like very so, alpha male. And it's like, so funny though. Yeah. It's definitely, cause you're just like, Oh, time. couldn't do that anymore. Definitely oh. not. Definitely not. And then like definitely misogynistic too, because like the women in it that come and go are just like completely interchangeable. Yes. And, uh, yeah, but it's, it was a, it was a real different time. I always find it funny in that show too, how like, so obviously it's based in the real world and there's like real world celebrities, right. the yeah. cameo, yeah. but there's also real world celebrities that play characters, but they're no one too famous. Yeah, I know exactly. But I wonder like, you there's know, a blurry line there. There's sometimes. a blurry line. And I, I would wonder too, if you're an actor and you get cast in the show and they're like, Oh, you're going to play uh, or an actress. You're going to play Vince's love interest for this episode, mm -hmm. but you're not, you're not you, you're this person. Mm -hmm. And you're like, Oh, am I not fucking famous enough to have my own name? I can't on think of anyone that dated Vinny that was famous enough to be themselves. Though. Sasha Gray. Was she not? I thought she was herself. She was herself. That's what I'm saying. Oh, if then, they were if, famous enough, they did play. Oh themselves. yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah, but yeah. it'd be like if, you know, like if you, someone was cast and they thought they were famous enough, but then they weren't. Right. And yeah, that'd be a I little blow they, to the I ego. I think they know. I think most of them knew. Cause they were mostly like kind of nobodies that maybe became something ish, but cause like, who does he date? Like Mandy Moore. Mandy Moore. The best example would be, um, uh, what Justine Chapin oh. played by uh, Leighton Meester. Yeah, but she wasn't really that famous. She wasn't really not the time. I feel like Gossip Girl wasn't out at that point. No, I don't think so. But uh, yeah, it's such a it's such a funny show. It just like, and then Ari just like getting mad at people all the time. But then like they always push him to this limit where he's like almost unforgivable, and then he like uh, he actually does something nice. You know what I mean? Like they're always kind of like tiptoeing that line. Yeah, he's ba he's based off a real person as well, right? I would assume so, or at least like an amalgamation yeah. of people. Like, yeah, because I think all the main characters are semi based on real people because they're all based on Mark Wahlberg's actual entourage. Mm -hmm. But then, like all the actual guys that were in his entourage, I think were like way older. Yeah, like the actual turtle is like 
he's not named turtle he's like another animal name he was like reptile or something like that right and uh but he's like 15 20 years older than mark, mark Wahlberg. Wahlberg. Oh, so there are, if you look up like the real characters now they're all like so, like in their 60s. yeah they're all like in their 60s and mark Whoa. Wahlberg's like 50 could they make that show not the same way but could they make it now and it have the same sort of like I think you just Prestige. do it quite differently. Yeah. I think, I, think it would, I, I really enjoy Entourage. I just think it could be so much better. My whole theory is that Vinny, like Adrian Grenier, is a sh- terrible actor. <laughs> and oh I'm never actually convinced that he would be a star. <laughs> yeah, I know. He, like, it, the show sets him up to be, like, basically like a Brad Pitt or, like, Tom, like mega movie Like a movie tier star. below, I think. You think? Yeah. Like a tier below? Okay. Because he, like, gets Aquaman, but then it's, like popular because of aquaman not because of him and right. stuff like he never for the most part transcends the movie that much is he more like a jake gyllenhaal yeah that's a better comparable okay yeah he's a name but he's even jake gyllenhaal i'd say he's like maybe maybe like a channing tatum oh yeah i mean that's pretty good yeah <laughs> but i don't ever get the vibe from his character that he no. is that no i don't get it i also <laughs> saw a podcast clip come up of him uh, cause I've been looking up entourage stuff while I've been rewatching it and he's talking about semen retention. <laughs> oh, Adrian Grenier. Oh no. <laughs> the like purifying effects of semen retention. I was like, Oh my God. What is that? Just like not coming for a bit. Yeah. I'm bad at that. <laughs> I got worms. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Anyways. Yeah, I mean, if you guys haven't watched it out there, you should watch Entourage. It's it still holds up. Yeah, send in a speak pipe. Let me know if you also think that Vince is unconvincing. Yeah, that um, Adrian Grenier is not. I think it's it speaks volumes that he didn't become anything. Exactly. Like none of them really did anything. No, I think we kind of talked about this a while ago, but like Kevin Connolly still like did like C C parts in movies and like same with Jerry Ferrara. Yeah, they're very much specific to their thing i kind of weirdly think uh, turtle eventually becomes the best actor of them all yeah and i think he starts out pretty bad yeah well he has like a crazy thick new york accent in the beginning <laughs> that's like obviously so like just over the top and yeah. then he they dial it way back in later seasons i like that he doesn't have a job for the first like four seasons yeah it's like how does he survive but then they like work in that he actually paid the money for them all to go to New York. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Like he like put up like 15 grand for their flights and you know, food and accommodations. Yeah. I don't know. It's a funny show. Yeah. 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 Is that it? Is that all? I guess. I feel like we did a good amount. <laughs> That's just at the end of the episode. Like, gosh, God, Entourage for 15 minutes? Really, guys? There was really? no... It wasn't 15 minutes. Yeah, it's probably like... Oh, okay, wait. The only other character I want to talk about in Entourage was Billy. Oh, the director? Billy Walsh. Yeah, Why Billy do they keep Walsh. hiring him? He's a psychopath, and he's not even good at his job. <laughs> like, I, he butchers Medi, and, and then they're like, no, let's do one more with Billy. <laughs> He's also just such a jackass to like E like calls him a suit all the time. <laughs> like, yeah. He's so mean. Yeah, he he actually has gone on to act in a bunch of stuff. Like I always has see he? him in a in a like in roles that really fit that. He was in character. I think you should leave. Yeah, he was. He play in the um the bones are their money. Yeah, exactly. Sketch. Love it. He pops up every now and then. And I like it. I like his acting. Yeah, he's good. All right. Well, any any clothing clothing thoughts? Clothing thoughts? Clothing uh, thoughts. T-shirts are still dope. We got uh, merch. Mahalomydude.com. Mahalomydude.com. Uh, Matt, what about you? Okay, yep. It hasn't said a word this whole episode. Um, you guys metaphorically full? Yeah. Me? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Okay. You guys got anything to promote? <sighs> um, um, no. No. No? No. Well, I'm going to say go watch the latest Mahal My Dude video if you haven't. It's Whistler opening weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the best day of the year. It was a ton of fun this year. And um, I think the video is pretty damn funny. A lot, of, a lot of good candid moments in the video. Not a lot of scripting on that one. So, 
Uh, also, leave us a review. We haven't got any uh, Apple Podcast reviews in quite a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so we appreciate those. Those help. Leave a comment on YouTube. Yep. Say, uh, um, uh, tell us how many day- times a day you poop. Yeah. That would be great. I would really enjoy knowing that. Don't just put the number, but, but like, I poop this many times. Yeah, exactly. Do you guys want to guess, see, like, if, like, uh, what the highest is? Um, I'm going to guess, like, the highest is a nine. The thing... What? No. People can say whatever number they want. And now you just prime them to say an absurd exactly. number. No, but nine was, like, I feel like my mom's a very health nut. She was, like, you should have at least nine small movements throughout the day when I was younger. That's insane. Yeah. That's, l- that's too much. I don't think that's a real thing. Because if you spend not... Uh, say you spend five minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's but 40 a, minutes a day. A you're healthy, on the clean poop is, like, also n- not much wiping. It's just, like, it's out, and then you move on, you know? When I do poop, it's like <laughs> it's like two two minutes max. It's like one, one or two. Or that's not true. You were in there for like five ten minutes. No, I wasn't. Oh, yeah? All right. Do you guys do the backward sitting where you use the the the, <laughs> the contraption as a little, the desk? little armrest? Oh yeah. my god! No. Feces Slater. Uh, feces Slater. <laughs> All right. That's yeah, everything. I'm feeling full now, Jason. I'm feeling full. Leave a speak pipe, leave a review, mm-hmm. and as always, um, um, nom, 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 Thank you for listening to Feeding Off Each Other. Please subscribe for more great podcasts.